Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Exter. Uh. Exter is the world's largest smart wallet brand. Uh, they designed innovative solutions to improve the way you carry your everyday items. This wallet offers quick card access, every card you need right at your fingertips. You see Schultz holding it up. Demonstrate the ease of the card mechanism. Mm. Uh, fans out your cards at the click of a button using your own card instead of the dummy cards that come in the wallet. It also has two key tracker features. First is trackable worldwide, okay? This is the one wallet you will not lose. Second is voice activated. Lost your wallet? Just call it! Wow. Works with Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. Solar powered. Two hours of sunlight gives you up to three months of charge, okay? The app connected to the tracker, Chipolo app. Okay? You can compare the thickness of a wallet to a conventional dad wallet. Look how, look how thick my regular wallet is compared to this. Bro, Come you on, can't man. do it, bro. You Come can't. Come on, man. You Come can't on, man. It. Come on, man. Come on, man. And these wallets offer RFID protection, which basically means it protects you against identity theft and skimming. Nobody can boop you, bro. Nobody can freaking boop you, bro. Mm -hmm. Nobody can uh, boop you. What the fuck is boop? You know when you like pay for some shit and you just go boop? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people yeah, do that to you on the street if you got your wallet out. That's right. Yeah. Extra offers smart solutions to improve how you carry your everyday essentials. Their wallets offer a sleek alternative to bulky dad wallets. And their signature trigger mechanism for easy card access ensures you're never left fumbling for a card you can't find, okay? Check out the wallets at extra.com and use promo code IDIOTS to get up to 55% off site-wide for this insane Black Friday special. That's up to 55% off site-wide with code IDIOTS at extra.com. Let's start the motherfucking show. Mm. Hezzy! Yes, sir. Hezekiah Walker. Yes, sir. Hezekiah Walker, Andrew Schultz, <laughs> this week announced... That today is Tuesday. We're recording this on a Tuesday, by the way. He announced on Monday that he was doing Madison Square Garden. Very heartwarming video with you and your father. Yeah, that was cool. The, 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 the living legend, Larry Legend. Yeah. He gave you the fist bump like, ooh. He was, you bought a good one home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What <laughs> you, know, you, bring what a fine you, ass, you bring your <laughs> fine ass fiance home. Yeah, yeah, and your dad yeah. is like, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He hit him with that fist bump, man. <laughs> Tickets went on sale today at 12 noon. It is 118. No, tickets went on sale at noon, right? They went no, on sale 10, at 9 10. in the morning. 9 in the morning. By what time were you called? A little before 11. A little before 11 a.m. Yeah. Schultz was called, and they said the garden is sold the fuck out. Yeah. Madison yeah. Square fucking garden is sold the fuck out. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Not the goddamn okay. theater. All right? Okay. Not, and no yeah. disrespect to everybody who's done the theater. The theater is big too. But not the theater at the garden. The garden. The whole garden. garden. Yeah. Jay-Z said you got to pardon Jay for selling out the garden in a day. The heavy sold it out in 90 minutes. Mm. <laughs> the heavy sold it out in 90 minutes. Charlotte, are we, are we, we're not making this up. Charlotte. We're not making this up. Are we making this up? Charlotte, this is not one of those times where you, I'm lying and you should believe me. Charlotte, man. The, the, the greatest compliment Charlie gave me, he goes, do you realize that you hey. are going to be on the floor at of the a garden. sold out Madison Square Garden, and you're not even coaching 12 black dudes. You're not even coaching 12 <laughs> Negroes, man. This is you going one on what? The accomplishment what is this, of one? a white man. man. Listen, listen, I don't that know how you funny. feel. That is funny. But most we about to most find white out. guys, in order to be here. Yes, think about it, Pat Riley. Yo. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Pat Riley. <laughs> Pat Riley couldn't sell out the freaking garden without 12 seven foot Negroes. Okay? <laughs> We're oh, going to shit. Cheat. I got to pour it, Taylor. Yeah, but I know Where's I took- your glass? You don't got no glass, Alex? I took a sip, my Come bad. Come on, man. This is big, man. This is big. Nah, this is crazy, this is man. Big. This is crazy. Taylor, you drinking? Oh, you go. shit. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Pour Chris cheers. for his limes. Chris, you can't drink? I have a little something. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, man. Let this me is cheers big. this one. Cheers, 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 man. Cheers, bro. Cheers, 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 cheers. Madison Square Garden. Yeah, man. For a guy who grew up in Manhattan, 
They can adjust that cam right there. Yeah. For a guy who grew up in Manhattan, yeah. New York City kid, everything. Sure. Going by that theater all the time. I remember one of the first things you ever told arena. me. Arena. When I met arena. you. The arena. Yeah. One of the first things you ever told me when I met you, I remember you saying, I think we was at a fight or something. And you was like, your dad always told you to show respect to the garden. Oh, yeah. Put on a college shirt. Always, yeah. I had to wear a college shirt every time I went to the garden. And now you sold out that venue that means so much. Damn right. How do you feel? I mean, I feel unbelievable. It's shocking. Why? You're it's putting in the work. It's not about, it's not about like, oh my God, I'm so su surprised. It's more like I've thought about something for 16 years every single day. And then to see it actually happen is a surreal Does it scare you? Feeling. Because now you know the law of attraction is real. You know that your thoughts can really become things. Nah, Manifestation is real. I, those things I've always believed. Mm -hmm. I do always believe. It doesn't mean it's going to happen right away, but, you know, it, obviously, like, this, it takes time. Yeah. But I fucking believed it could happen. I remember every time I would go into the garden, we're seeing a concert, or any time I could, especially in concerts, you can go to the center, you know, and you can, I would just go in there, I'd sit down, I'd just kind of, like, imagine what this was going to be like. And fuck, man. It is an awesome feeling. The reason I tell y'all, y'all got to stop comparing yourself to Andrew Schultz is because, you know, Andrew's name is like synonymous with so many things right now. It's a blueprint for a lot of different things. But until you have a fan base that shows up and supports you with their dollars mm. the way Andrew does, don't talk to me about your views. Don't talk to me about going viral. Mm. If you don't have a true fan base that shows up to support you with their dollars, then to me, you don't really have the value that you think you have. Value over viral. You have a fan base. I got to thank you for that, man. You have a You shared your fan base with me. That's what got us started. Eh, eh, eh. Nah, bro. I, I, don't, you did. I don't like when people say that only because we started Brilliant Idiots together. But you brought so much more to Brilliant Idiots at that time. And you still bring so much more. But That's not true. But, but I'm just saying, like, I got the opportunity to be in front of people that liked comedy. They appreciated your version of comedy, which I think is, you know, kind of similar to mine. So it gave me the opportunity to do that. And there are other people along the way that also were instrumental, but you were the first person that I think introduced me to a fan base. Being on TV is one thing. Maybe people yeah, fuck yeah, with you, maybe yeah, they yeah. don't. Maybe they just fuck with the show. How many people are, you know, the host of a show and the second they stop hosting it, all of a sudden people stop caring about them? Yeah, ask anybody on Fox News. <laughs> For real. Yeah, They're yeah, the yeah. biggest person in the world. And then, then, I mean, I guess Tucker's doing all right. But, like, cool. there's a lot of people that yeah. the second they leave is a wrap for them. So that was huge for me, man. I think it's interesting with the podcast game because podcasts might even give you more of a, a, a cult-like following than even radio. Because sometimes you can get in your car and, you know, you might just be forced to listen to radio. You got to go out of your way to listen to yeah. a podcast. So, you yeah. know, you, you, you can't. You're opting in. You're opting in. So it's just like, yo, it's one thing, well, we could do brilliant idiots, and it's one thing to be successful for a couple of episodes. We've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that, That's when I knew The Breakfast Club was something. It's when I saw that it was the YouTube numbers, and I was like, oh, people are opting into this. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not flipping through channels because they're no, in traffic. That's right. They're opting in. And you're but, meeting people where they are. Exactly. And the same thing with stand-up, even just putting your stuff online. Especially when we started early, when it was just YouTube. Mm -hmm. It was like, you're opting into this clip. You're opting in. Nobody to was doing that before Andrew Schultz. If they were, I didn't see it. I know Louis C.K., you know, put out specials. He definitely sold his thing paper, first, I'm yeah. talking about giving away clips. You got to think, yeah. we come from the era where you didn't give your stand-up away. Yeah. That was your bread and butter. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why people didn't want to do specials. Because they felt like, oh, if I give this hour away, then I can't go on the road and tour it. Yeah. You know what kind of nuts it takes for you to put out clips? To say, yo, I'm yeah. going to start giving away clips of my stand-up specials? Yeah, that's that's the thing that, like, well, people, sometimes people say, yo, you started, you know, clips. You started people doing YouTube special and that kind of stuff. And, uh, but I, what I would say, the, the fundamental change that happened from that was the relationship with material. Mm. And maybe that was my mm. change of the game. It's like, mm. instead of material being a thing you hoarded and then you put out for a special and hope that people saw, and then maybe you were able to go on the road because of it, it became your tool to get people to come out and see you. So now you don't have to hope that you get an HBO special and yeah. hope people watch it and hope that you could tour. I literally see myself and other comics putting out the thing that we care the most about, getting 
the positive reinforcement and building fan bases from it. Did podcasts make you feel like that because you were putting out such high level content every week? Hell yeah. Also, just like podcasts get you to cement like who you are. It's hard to lie for two hours. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So Not it just really. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually fun. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun to lie for two hours. Who been lying for two hours? We've been yo? telling the truth for so every uh, all day. It's like, yo, can I go live for a couple hours for entertainment? This guy. You don't think so? This guy. Yeah. This you you don't guy. think so? This guy. I like lying for a couple hours for entertainment, man. Yeah, it was. It's good. It's been fun, man. It's been ten years, <laughs> man. <laughs> 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 it's been fun as shit, but I tell you something, man. This shit, man. Watching you and I, I, I when, when I when I told you when you text me when you show, told, text me Sunday, I said we got to sell this shit out in twenty four hours. Yeah, it was great. What the fuck we got to do? That's also the coolest thing is like, there's moments where you're gonna do something you're really excited about, and like when you tell your friends about it, and they're like, all right, how how are we how are we solving this? You goddamn right. It? But you feel. It's overwhelming, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's overwhelming because I think it's so easy, especially in this game, to be like there are people who they have envy or jealousy. I'm very fortunate. Like the people that I've built with are the people that want to see other people win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you say that a lot, but I know it through execution, and it's like, and like you know, Rogan is like that. Literally, the best people at what they do are like that. Isn't that funny? Absolutely. And the people who are not like that. There's this thing in the- They that, reap what they sow. You reap what you sow. There's this thing in stoicism where it talks about, um, which I don't know if I necessarily agree with, maybe, but they said every time you hear something about somebody, there's a technical term for it, but there's like a little bit of envy comes into play. Mm. And, but then they say you have to turn that envy immediately to joy. Yep. Meaning you put yourself in that person's shoes yep. and, and you're genuinely- happy for that person and what yeah. that person accomplished. And they yeah. said you should constantly, constantly, constantly practice that because of what you just said. Yeah. You will reap what you sow. Yeah. You know 100%. what I'm saying? So you should be ecstatic for people. Like that yeah. shit excites me yeah. when I see Andrew put out the video with his pops. I'm like, oh yeah. shit, this is cool. First of all, I'm like, this is gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, there's women that probably don't like shows that's gonna be like, oh, he got me. I'm yeah. gonna come to this show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's something, because you don't see guys, guys don't give it up for their dads like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mommy gets a lot of the credit. Yeah. Like to see what happens when a man pours into another man, which is his son, and just gives him that confidence. Yeah. And like, it's like, yo, that's where Schultz gets his ability to feel like he can accomplish anything. 100%. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Like that shit is different. Like, don't blame me if I if I'm like overly confident. That's yeah. not my fault. What do you want your child to be? That's my dad, bro. <laughs> my dad did that. You yeah. know what I mean? And my mom too. Like, shout out my mom as well. But like, yeah, like I had a very my my mom. I, I just found this out recently. My mom told me she's like, after you were born, I went back to work and your dad took off. Wow. Because he had a job. He was like producing news at NBC. Wow. So he took off and he just was with me the first six months of my life. And I wonder if part of that is. You know, like a bonding that we kind of made right there. He was a phenomenal dad through and through, like never took a day off in 40 years of my life. Never took a day off. But I wonder if there's something happens there in those Absolutely. like first few months. Where That's how just... I was my oldest daughter. Really? Yeah, because she was born in June of 2008. I got fired November 2nd of 2008. My wife was going to work. I was too proud to go collect unemployment. So I was at home yeah. with my daughter for like, Seven months. I didn't get another gig until like May of the next year. Wow. So like seven, eight months. So when you yeah. see when you see the confidence that my daughter has, and she's a cancer like me. Yeah. And like she's very not slick at the mouth, but quick witted and yeah. like, you know, and she's super well read. So it's just like, this is this is this me. Is this is I mean, it's the best version of me and my wife, yeah. but this is me. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it, it's a even though you know she's 15 and don't want nothing to do with me right now, sure. it's still that. And, Bond. And, and what would you do at 15? What was I doing at 15? I'm saying you would be the exact same way. Uh, I was shook of my pops. That's why when I see you, yeah, that's yeah, why you, when I see you. You just ain't tasing people. Exactly. That's the, <laughs> the only difference between you and your dad is yes. that you're not scary. My dad, my dad gave me a false sense of confidence. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like when I look at you, what you when I look at what you, and it's funny because both our dads are named Larry, but when I look at what your dad 
poured into you. My dad gave me a false sense of confidence, but that's only because he was still figuring things out for himself. Because mm. you got to think he was still dealing with substance abuse issues yeah. and yeah. trying to get his life together, dealing yeah. with his own mental health issues. So he was trying to figure yeah. things out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you mean a false sense of confidence? Because he had an idea of what he thought a man should be. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if your dad, I could be wrong, but it don't seem like your dad told you this is what manhood is. He never told me a thing. He didn't tell he me just a showed single you. thing. I just observed it. Yeah. And he just, there was a couple that he, he told me the importance of apologizing. Mm. That was one. And I remember that distinctly. Like he's like, it's important to apologize when you do something wrong. We, it takes a man to apologize when you do something wrong. And I think that's been really helpful in my life. Like, it's okay. You're going to so fuck great. up, and you got to fucking apologize. I say I'm sorry. You ain't sorry, motherfucker. Your dad would you say that? You ain't sorry. You know what I'm saying? You apologize. Ain't, ain't shit sorry about you. I kind of agree with your dad. I get what he's saying. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you do seem like someone who ain't sorry, but we're saying. <laughs> well, he meant like you're not a sorry motherfucker, like how a team is sorry. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Serious. Like you're a yeah. sorry-ass player. Yeah. That's what he meant it by. He meant it like, yo, yeah. you're not sorry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Say you apologize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, we're nitpicking now. Yeah, nah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, come on. But I don't know. I just, he was always there. He'd come to every single game. It's so funny, even as an adult, like Jamil, you know Jamil. Jamil hit, hit me, he said something. Uh, he goes, did you ever see another parent at one of our basketball games? And I, and I thought back and I was like, oh, shit. You play with all black guys? <laughs> <laughs> He's the only white guy on the team? What happened there? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Jamil's black, by the way. I mean, y'all didn't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Jewish Jamil. Yeah. yeah. No, no. And it was just like, yeah, he was just always there. And I think a confidence comes from that. Like your, your parents just always wanted to be involved. Having your back. Having your back yeah. and just being like present. And oh, you have a thing? I want to be there. Even to this day, he'll ask every single time I'm going on set. You know, his memory is not there. But like every single time he's like, you going up tonight? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, can we come? Like as a knee jerk reaction. Wow. And uh, I think that that kind of sticks with you and makes you feel like the things you do are important. How many times has he seen you on stage? <sighs> oh, plenty. Tons. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that is Radio City was obviously big. And then, you know, uh, and then Madison Square Garden will be big, you know. That's the one. You were fighting back tears in that video, bro. Bro, that shit was hard, bro. Mm. That shit was hard. Because he's right there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he doesn't know exactly what's going on. Like, you know, my dad is what's called MCI, so his short-term memory really isn't there. So I couldn't tell him why I brought him there. But at the same time, he's just in the garden. He's like, why are we here? And then he'll keep asking me. He'll never forget the garden, though. Never forget the never garden. Forget the garden. Never, forget the garden. He'll never forget the garden. He I mean, looked very he, present in that video to me. He saw Ali Frazier in the garden. Shit. Like, he, I mean, he's just seen so many things there. And, like, I mean, the way he would talk about it, especially when you're from New York. Like, I know, I know the Knicks haven't been great while we're alive, mm -hmm. but the garden was still representative of greatness. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is just where you saw greatness. And... uh Oh man, I can't even. Yeah, still. You like, gotta hard bring to back believe. that feeling. That's that fucking show show that 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 shit gotta feel like the Knicks in the nineties. Real talk. <laughs> you know Real what talk. I'm saying? Yeah. Like that shit gotta feel like that. Like yeah. it gotta feel like that come May fucking fourth. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? Oh hell Single yeah. to Mayo weekend. That's right. What if it's mad Mexicans that just decided to come out for the show? To clean up after? Or oh, what? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. We getting started, baby. No, you got to get ready. Get primed for fucking Cinco de Mayo weekend. Cinco de Hezzy weekend. Cinco de Hezzy. Mm. May the fourth be with you. You got to come out there dressed like fucking Mayweather was when he fought yo. Oscar Taylor. Yo, son. <laughs> Mayweather's the GOAT, bro. <laughs> but, yo, we added a second show, man. On Cinco de Mayo. No, no, we added the third. Oh. We had to, <laughs> out of respect for our Mexican brothers and sisters, we yeah, added, yeah, yeah. we know that y'all going for it heavy on on the fifth. Nah, so man, May third, so we added for you, man. That shit is going. Thank be you, bro. Like, God damn, because I've been waiting for this. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know when you're trying to explain things to people and you like y'all don't realize how big Schultz is, yeah. you know, because they 
you know, people pay attention to our overseas. I'm a Latin pop star in America. Exactly. I keep explaining that. And I, I've been telling for I said, when he comes to America and he starts selling out arenas, that's when the fuck y'all gonna really pay attention. Yeah. And look, the garden, 90 minutes, sold out. Yeah. Already added another motherfucking show. Yeah. yeah. Come the fuck on, man. Yeah. Come the fuck on, man. Yeah. Thank Come you, man. Come on, Hezzy, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. That's That's been awesome. Thank you. And thank you so much, bro. You've just been so instrumental in everything that's happened in my life. So I'd like to give you your flowers as much as I possibly can. You've been great. The world just catching on. Respect. You've been fucking great. Respect. You've been, you've been who you are. Like, that's what people don't realize. People are who they are before they got here. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you've been, you've been him. You know what I mean? You've been him. And now people are just starting to witness that. Well, oh, it's going to be incredible. Oh, thank you. What else we got I this need, week? I need you in the building, bro. What the fuck kind of question is that? I need you, Duval in the building. Like, what are you talking about? We need Rogan about? coming out, man. We need First we show need, or second show? Which one we need to be at? You need to be at both, bro. Both. I'll be I there. mean, Charlotte got to play a role in the show, man. Charlotte got to be part of the show in some way. We got to do something. We got to do something, bro. We got it. Mm. Yeah, what if you catch the crowd with a... What if you catch him with a, like a... Nah, I'm no good at that shit, man. I know my <laughs> they gonna see it from a mile I've away. I've been getting got Motherfuckers be catching me. And they be saying, <laughs> and you know what's so funny? I can't always catch people in the street. Like, they'll try to get you quick. Like, this dude was walking by. You know, you, you know how somebody will walk by you and they recognize it's you? Yeah. Yo, Charlotte! What's happening? What's up? Yo, man. <laughs> you know Molten, right? <laughs> Knock it off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what's Molten? That's I don't fire. fucking know. I didn't ask. And that's the Bruh. fucked up shit. Because when you hear ones that don't sound right, you want to say, what is that? Just to see how they fucking Yo, get somebody you. somebody caught me with the Israel-Palestine war. No, man. Bro, they said... And with that, you know, you, you, you're taking it serious. So, the, so they were like, yeah, it's just horrible what they, with this new terrorist organization uh, that popped up, Kizma. And I was like, who? <laughs> and they're like, it's my dad. <laughs> I was like, yo, you can't use Israel Palestine to catch me with a kiss my dick. <laughs> I thought about one of those two. <laughs> Somebody eating get? some hummus? Yeah, you yeah. love Hamas, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> that shouldn't be funny. No, it's not. What else we got, Taylor? Why you look so depressed all of a sudden, Taylor? I'm thinking. Relax. Well, what you we thinking don't want about? you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I tell you. Okay, you know, let me think of the imaging that I have. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. What? You're talking what? to the mic. The mic is right there. <laughs> you got to say. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Charlo, why you do that? <laughs> Okay, so... <laughs> Let's play her game. <laughs> Stop yeah, calling it, it a called? game. <laughs> meme of the day. Meme of the day. This day in a meme. So I've been seeing that the kids, the celebrity kids, just want to be regular kids. Um, I don't understand this. But go ahead. But recently, Joe... I don't know how to say her name. Chevis, is it? And Bow Wow. Chevis and Bow Wow's child. She was child. saying how that she doesn't like to be on camera. She wants to be a regular kid. She won't be acting like that. Beautiful. And then same Kim thing K. with Kim K's situation, too. She wants to be in a regular apartment. North does. <laughs> yeah, North doesn't know what Kim does. Yeah. No one does. Here's the thing. <laughs> First of all, do, these, do these kids even know what regular is? Do these kids know what normal is? No. That's what I'm saying. What did it mean when they yeah, said they want to be Who's even telling normal? them that? Even the people they're going to school with are not living normal lives. I know. Yeah. What is so, they, yeah, what is this normal What does normal mean? I don't know. Well, here, so this is what... Also, the arrogance to be like, I want a normal life. This is what Joy said about her child. Who's, who's this? Whose baby mom is that? This is, ba this is Bow Wow's baby mom. Okay. Wow. What car is she in? She She's driving James and the Giant Peach. Well, see, I think her situation is different. 13, you? She's gonna be 13 in six months. Like, I don't know. She just does not like being recorded. She's just like, mom, stop, mom, 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 stop. Every time I have to like sneak into it, and even when I sneak into it, she gets so mad. She's just like, no, I look crazy. Like, no, I look crazy. My hair needs to be done. And then when her hair is done, she's like, mom, stop. <laughs> I'm like, what's the problem? She's like, I just don't want to be recorded. Like, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to ask either. <laughs> you know the oh my God. <laughs> you know the funny part about this, though? Like, 
she is not wrong for feeling the way she feels because she's a mom. Mm -hmm. But I think what we don't realize is, is that a lot of times the things we may want our kids to do, our kids may simply not want to do. But here's, is Bow Wow's kid really going through it? Yeah, I mean, she's like, a Nickelodeon star. For oh, sure. she's, a, she's yeah. a TV star. I did not know that. Oh, but yeah, I mean, that's a little bit. Bow Wow's daughter's a Nickelodeon star? Yeah, she's a Nickelodeon. Oh, so she got every, and she's 12. She got every right to say she don't want to do it. She might be overwhelmed. Yeah. And if kids are overwhelmed, you cannot, you know, you got to dis let them disconnect because she, she's going to grow to hate it. Yeah. Like she might just want to yeah. take a break for a second and then she might get back to it when she feel like she want to get back to it. Like who the hell want to be working crazy at 12? I was just reading about that in Jada Pinkett Smith book. She had this whole chapter where she talked about Willow. Yes. And you don't realize all of the things Willow was set to do. Willow had to whip my hair record. She that shit slap, bro. That shit slap. And she then Willow was supposed to st star in Annie. Oh, really? Oh, really? Annie. I didn't know yes. that. And like she, she had the awareness just to be like, I don't want to do this. Mm. Like this is too much work. Like I don't want to be, I, I want to be a child. Like and, and I'm like, yo, you gotta respect a kid's wishes. Mind you, she was already in it. Mm. Like she didn't. She disconnected when she was in it. Like she already had signed up to do the movie. She had all of this backing, Jay Z and James Lasseter. They had the rights to Andy, all of this shit. And she decided, yo, I don't want to do it. Good for her. You can't wow. why you can't force that. them as a child. Like why would you force? Why, once you force your child, it's child labor. Yeah. Might as well send them to China. <laughs> I'm serious. Nah, you're once right. you force your child nah, to work, right. yeah, acting in movies is very similar to making iPhones. I mean, <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. If you don't want to be in the movie, that's true, bro. If you don't want to be in the movie, yeah. it, it can feel just as well, I don't know. Channel I mean, that. Channel that as motivation. Like Annie didn't want to be an orphan. Annie did not want to be a fucking orphan, man. You know what I mean? Annie was talking about the sun was gonna come out tomorrow. She had no idea if that was true or not. And that's just optimism. You know, you know what? It wasn't good enough for her. <laughs> no. What happens at the end of that movie? Does she get adopted? Yes. Yeah, she got adopted during the movie. <laughs> By whom? By Fucking the Mr. Rich Drummond. Guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's his name. No, it was Mr. Drummond, man. And then she had the two black brothers. Gosh. Well, then, uh, I don't think I know about Andy Gary Coleman. What, Arnold, Arnold and Willis. Oh, drumming his dick on your head? <laughs> that? <laughs> oh, oh that, that one? <laughs> that's a good show to get a lot off. Yo, and the show's called Different Strokes. I literally strokes. thought that's what you were saying. <laughs> no, nah, because you said, you said drumming in the two black brothers. And I was like, is that the... <laughs> Right. No, <laughs> Arnold and Willis, man. Did y'all want to see what Kim said or no? What did Kim say, Taylor? I mean, it's the same. Yeah, shut Let's up, see already. what Kim K said. North, is that the she'll video? go to her dad. She'll be like, dad is the best. He has it all figured out. He doesn't have a nanny. He doesn't have a chef. He doesn't have security. He lives in an apartment and she'll start crying. Why don't you have an apartment? I can't believe we don't have an apartment. Dad is the best. She feels like that because Kanye probably just lets her play. Like, you know, Kanye's a big kid himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? She go over Kanye's house, it's no pressure. Go to Kanye's apartment, it's well, the, no yeah. pressure. The grass is always greener. The grass is always greener at the house that you're not at all the time. Yeah, because it's like hanging with your grandparents. That shit is fun because there's Absolutely. no rules. Absolutely. <laughs> the rules parent is always going to be the annoying one until you get older and then that's the parent where you're like oh wow they were really fired they really cared about me they really wanted me to be great is the video yeah, done kind of... huh is the video done which one the one that says you sold out in 90 minutes yeah Come on, let's, pull, let's take a break right, we gotta see. take a flex break <laughs> y'all can watch us do this where's right. the video send, send I'll it to you, you right? i'll let you yeah, yeah, i'm, I'm, I'm gonna right. repost you no, this is a flex break i'm gonna repost andrew after a flex you. break is you gotta take a flex break. There is, yo, you saw it at the fucking garden in 90 minutes. Stop acting like this shit is normal. Mm. Stop acting like this shit is regular, mm. okay? Mm. This shit ain't normal. This shit ain't motherfucking regular, man. Mm. Praise be to God and the people in New York City. 90 minutes, conversation changes, bro. <laughs> conversation changes. You gotta start look at, looking at me different. You gotta start Talk being- Talk to me motherfucking nice. You gotta start being like Doja Cat. What Doja Cat do? After you sell out the second show, <laughs> that's what I'm do, doing. You gotta do one video where you humble, like thank you very much, this and that. Then you gotta do another one. You doing what Doja Cat did? Play that again, <laughs> Big Doja. Yeah, 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 yeah.
<laughs> you guys, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. I feel like that was really mean for me to do that. To say that, make that video. That was like really disturbing. I'm serious. <laughs> and then he does it. Like, <laughs> what? It doesn't it was again. That <laughs> just because. This is crazy. She's just having fun with her people. <laughs> she must have sold some shit out. Did she sell out the garden in 90 minutes, though? <laughs> All right, guys, we take a break for a second because I got to tell y'all about the chew. Blue chew, okay? Best dick you ever delivered in your life is going to be delivered by blue chew. Same active ingredients as inside Viagra or Cialis, but this is the chew. This one that we rock with. This one that makes it turn into a lobster mac. If you want it to sound like lobster mac, Okay? You hit the blue chew. All right? If you want to try those other pills, she's going to sound like Bernie Mac. But if you want it to sound like Lobster Mac, it's blue chew. Okay? And you know what? You're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You go to bluechew.com slash idiots. Use our promo code idiots. You can get your first month free. Just pay the $5 shipping. You are welcome. Now let's get back to the show. Somebody got a good idea. Somebody was like, yo, it should be collars only. What? Collars only. Oh yeah, for the show. Collars, collars only. only. Put on a collar. Collars only. If you if you wear a collar, you're a real freaking Andrew Schultz fan. That's you facts. understand the meaning of why you got a collar on in That's the garden. Facts. Um, listen, got a salute to the OG Steve Harvey. I'm gonna see my guy Steve Harvey in a couple of weeks in Dubai, man. And I want to tell you about something that's been keeping me, keeping me feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately. It's called Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens, co-founded by Big Unk, Steve Harvey, and formulated by Harvard scientists. It's a game-changing formula that boosts your body's mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day. You want to know some of the key benefits, 30 superfoods per serving, nine greens per serving, clinically studied probiotics, contains fruits, vegetables, mushroom blend, enzymes to aid digestion, zero grams added sugar, vegan, gluten-free, 15 calories per serving. Cost only $1.50 per day. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price. I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price. Take control of your health today and experience more daily energy with Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateYou.com, L-E-V-A-T. E-Y-O-U.com and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire purchase. Let's get back to the show. I got an idea, Hezzy. Talk to me. Somebody in the comments said some real shit. They said that if you come to the garden to watch the Hezzy, collars only. Gang, okay. I love if it. If you are an Andrew Schultz super fan, Andrew Schultz fan, you've been listening to Brilliant Idiots, you've been listening to Flagrant all these years, you know why the collar means so much in the garden. I think we all got to come call it up in May, yo. I agree. I think I that's agree. the move. Agree. Let's Pay do it. Let's keep respect. it real, 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 real rat package that yo, night. Yo, I love it. Let's yeah. do a real rat package that night in the garden, yeah, man. Yeah, I love it. Might have to do it for real. I love it. Everybody dressed up. Everybody dressed to up. The you might, yeah, you got to do go suits. You got to do it, Let's man. Let's throw the garden I think back. we got to do it, yo. I love it, I think it, we got to do it for bring, the garden, bring man. Bring the minx out, too? Oh, well, it's oh. May. We going Frank Lucas. So what? Uh, it so don't matter. Hey. Frank Luke, what is it? It's Frank. It was Frank. in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we took a quick little flex break just to post this video letting everybody know that uh, the Hezzy sold out the garden in 90 minutes and tickets uh, go on sale Wednesday at 9 a.m. for another show. Truthfully, by the time this podcast come out, y'all, pro this show, it'll probably be sold out. I mean, Second show will probably be gone. Inshallah. 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 What else we got, man? Oh, celebs are getting back with their exes. Yeah. Everybody says it's get back with your ex season. I mean, oh, Sukiyana said that. Sukiyana encouraged everybody to get back with their ex. Why? What'd she say? Because Birdman what? and Tony Braxton. Here's the thing that's so funny about this. How do we know these people even broke up? How I didn't know, know Birdman that. and Tony Braxton Yeah, I, say, I didn't know they broke up. Who's that in the corner? 
Um, Janet Jackson and JD. Janet Jackson and JD back together too? And who's that? Lil Meech and Summer Walker? Nelly and Ashanti? I don't think Janet and JD are, I think they're just friends though. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why people care. I'm gonna be honest with you. What what do you mean? And I still don't understand why celebrity is the freaking blueprint for everything. Like just because it's working for these individuals, what makes you think you should get back with with your ex? Well, Does it make you want to get back with your ex, Taylor? Uh, no comment. Not them, not them. But it's already. I'm not saying nothing else. Relax. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Damn. Relax. He's not, first of all, it's not a it's not an X. Let's be very clear. Damn. What you mean it's not an X? So what is it? A Y? A Z? What is it? Huh? Um he's my best friend, so it is. Oh. Hold on, is that the one who just had a baby? No. Oh. Asshole. <laughs> Me or him? You. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so Taylor's back with her best Relax. friend. Relax. I didn't know you had a best friend Relax. that was a guy. Wait a minute. This is really beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Hold on. I, wait, 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 wait. You have a best friend that you've been intimate with? Um, We started off as friends. Um, there was all a his time. friends. I met, him, I met him back in Hampton. We started off as friends. Started off as friends. Okay. And... Over time, you know, chemistry got more stronger and saw what was going on. Who is this nigga? I know him for ten. I know. <laughs> have not ever. No, heard you of this have man. met him. I brought him to the station like six years ago. Wow. <laughs> He's met my parents. Yo. All that shit. Already. Why have you kept him away? Um, life be happening, but he's we've kept in touch and then we reconnected. That's so shit's know. rekindled. <laughs> oh shit! You over there blushing, <laughs> doing your little feet, creasing your fucking air force. Yeah. You don't even get or whatever the fuck of his Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> creasing your fucking J's. Look at you. Hold on. Relax. You're smitten. Yeah. I mean, smitten like a goddamn kitten. Yeah. Wait. What? So what's going on right now? <laughs> you tell her. I hate you. Blushing like a motherfucker. I wish we had a camera on you so people could All see right. this shit. Damn. Wait, wait, so break this down. So wait, there's no. a. What did he major in? What did he major in? Your life that you in. loved, huh? What did he major in? Business. Oh, I see what the fuck happened. How long ago was Hampton homecoming? Relax. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> I know what the fuck happened. Wait, 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 wait tell you it. Went to Hampton homecoming last weekend or the weekend before last, huh? <laughs> Thirty, sixty mg's of that good sativa. Couple of drinks. First huh? of all, first of all, before rough neck before, neck. <laughs> <laughs> before Hampton, it was already we already re reconnected. But that homecoming weekend was different. <laughs> was it different? Yep. That homecoming <laughs> hoo ha hit different, different? Huh? <laughs> Was it different though? That Hampton homecoming hoo ha hit different. It was home. I'll did, say that. Did you give him? Did you give him some? I just want a rough neck. You go on the tongue. <laughs> you guys had sex. <laughs> Did you guys have sex? Oh my god! Hampton home. Did you use a, did you use a condom? Oh, oh that's my god! You asked gosh. me for, for a condom for Taylor. No. <laughs> Yo. First of all, I didn't ask you for a condom. Oh, you was, you had your goddamn cyber wallet, and I said, "Can you fit condoms in here?" I ain't said nothing about it. You are, I ain't asking no condom. That's very true. Taylor Gay. Oh my god! You know, I know what happened because the last few weeks we've been in here. Whenever we start talking about this, I'm on a spiritual journey. I'm on a spiritual Wait journey. Wait a minute! <laughs> you found heaven, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that spiritual journey ended up at. Hampton homecoming. Wait, like you started I know, doing I'm really like, happy. Like, 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 right. You let your hair down. You, you did let your blushing. hair down. I compliment your hair. Remember, Creasing I compliment the J's, you tapping the laptop. You looking up in the sky. Oh, you know, that stop. Shit. Can't stop smiling. Damn. Can't stop smiling. Damn. Mm. Man, you might as well give him a shout out. Yeah, give him a shout no. out. Give <laughs> yeah, homie a shout no. out. Yo, homie, shout out to you, man. Yeah. Taming that wild Philly John. Oh, Where oh Finally. <laughs> She's walking different, man. Walking fucking different. You are walking different. All right. So I remember look. when you ran to the elevator today. I was like, there's a little hobble going on over here. <laughs> Did you see David Axelrod said it's time for Joe Biden to sit the fuck down? What? David Axelrod. Who's that? David Axelrod. The name former, sounds familiar. Former, uh, Obama advisor. Oh. That was his title, right, Chris? Chief of Staff or okay. David Axelrod? I thought you were talking about the character from Billions. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> what's his face is Axelrod, Axelrod too, yeah. yeah. All right, so what do you say to Biden? Look, uh, only he can decide that, Phil, but 
Uh, and and I don't I'm not reacting to one particular poll, but uh, you know a whole body of uh, of research and conversations with people. Uh, and my concerns, I want to make clear, I think Biden's been a great president. I think he's done things that have generational, will have generational impact and importance. I think he's, you know, been honorable in the office. Uh, you know, I, I have I have nothing but good things to say. But uh, as I've said for like a couple of years now, the issue is not uh, for him is is not uh political, it's actuarial. And you can see that in this poll. I mean, there's just a lot of concern about the age issue. And uh, and that is something that I think he needs to uh, ponder. Just do a check and say, is this the right thing uh, to do? I believe if he does run, he will be the nominee. And I'm not encouraging people to challenge him. I think the party w should fall in behind him if he's the nominee of the Democratic Party, because at the end of the day, this is a uh, not a normal race. This is a race about democracy and the state of our democracy and the survival of our democracy. And, uh, and that's the, th the threat on the other side here. And I know how deeply the president feels about that. So he just has to ask himself, is is you know, is this the best path? Uh, I suspect that he will say yes. Um, but time is fleeting here. And this is probably the last moment uh, for him to do that check. And it's 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 probably good if he does. Here's the thing. I've been saying that as far as like, I feel like the Republican Party should move away from Trump and I feel like the Democrats should move away from Biden. But, but here's to my whom? Thing. That's exactly the there, point. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. If you're David Axelrod, no, there's plenty there on Republican side. But if you're David Axelrod and you make a statement like that, as a former chief strategist for Barack Obama, you can't make a statement like that without a plan B. Oh, that's a shot. That's a shot. Oh, Obama and David Axelrod was talking to I don't feel like David just came up with that on. Oh, I feel like he came up with that on his own. But you don't feel comfortable going out there saying that unless unless that is a very big sentiment in the whole re, uh, Democratic okay, Party. Okay, so who do you put up there? Like, if you I could, do, I don't know. That's my whole point. What is the Plan B? You can't make a statement like that without a Plan B. Michelle Obama. No, man. Tell no, she, she would win. No, man. So Democrats have nobody. Republicans. Democrats pretty... do have people, but they're not gonna get behind Ooh. them. I like Tim Ryan in Ohio, man. I think Tim Ryan in Ohio. I know him, he, bro. He, he's, 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 he's not. A, he's, he used to be in the Senate. He used I just to be know part the of Congress. sweatshirt guy from Ohio. The sweatshirt guy. No, it's Pennsylvania. Oh, Pennsylvania. My bad. Oh no, no, no! I need to talk about Tim Ryan from Ohio would be good. You can't have Gavin Newsom. What about Gretchen? Uh, <laughs> no woman's going to win, Chris. We got to be honest about this. We got to start. Chris just said Gretchen okay, Whitmer. Schultz. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, it's just America. Like, it's not going to happen. But we said that about black people, yeah. too. Yeah, but but it's a, it's different. It's still a man. I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? If you would have asked me back in the day, would we elect a white woman before a black man, I would have said yes, I would have told 100%. you absolutely not. No way. No just, like, way. just like everybody says Secretary Pete. I like Secretary Pete, but come on, y'all really think America's going to ever elect a gay man as president? Or not. Have you seen America? Exactly. That's Hold why on. I say, why not? Have I you think, seen I think, America? I think America could a gay president. Yeah, I don't see it. I genuinely think we could. I don't see it. They I, can't be all gay about it. <laughs> Secretary Pete driving a minivan with his husband. <laughs> That's pretty straight. That's what married couples drive. My parents drove a minivan. We got a speaker of the house right now who thinks that gay what? people should be banished. Banished to where? Um, you didn't see his comments? No. Pull up Mike Johnson's comments on homosexuality. Uh, Wait, what'd he say? <laughs> pull up, put, put it like this. His worldview, this is his words, his worldview is the Bible. Hmm. Oh. And he's the Speaker of the House. What's his name? He believes in uh, uh, conversion therapy, all of that shit. Here's the thing. If you're religious, right? Yep. If you're devoutly religious and this is your God telling you what to do and you're not questioning your God, yep. okay? Isn't conversion therapy empathetic? It's not a mean thing. It's like, hey, I, I want you to go to heaven. I love you as a brother. You are doing this sinful act. 
but I think that we can help you stop doing that through this conversion. So it's why like, isn't there conversion therapy for premarital sex? A conversion therapy for eating pork? Learn polyester. Uh, conversion therapy for wearing polyester. All of these things the Bible tells oh, no, no. you that you oh, shouldn't do. Th there's no question. There's no question that there's tons of hypocrisy. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is if we're approaching this perspective from people who don't take the Bible literally, and we're looking at them and be like, oh, it's so rude what you're doing trying to convert these people. No, he but takes it literally. Mike if Johnson he takes said, it literally, he, he, that's, said, he said the fall of the Roman Empire was homosexuality. And he's the speaker of the house. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll hear him out. I'll hear him out. All right, we gotta hear him out. You gotta hear him out. You gotta hear him out. He might have a fire brilliant idiot. That sounds like brilliant idiot's point. There was a lot of pedophilia. <laughs> what? Explain how if, if if homosexuality crashed the Roman Empire. Then explain Alexander the Great. No, Alexander the Great. Can we just be honest here? Alexander the Great didn't really have an empire. He had like a hot ten years. He was a but a very a very hot ten. Years. I was he just, had a hot ten years, really capped off by taking out Cyrus, the Persian king. But if he didn't take out Cyrus, he's almost not even remembered because that was the big accomplishment back then. That land was traded back and forth in tons of different ways. He was all evil. But taking out the Persians was like an impossible thing. I right. read a story about somebody he ran up on, and the person wasn't scared of Alexander the Great. And and, the, and and somebody with Alexander said, why aren't you afraid? And he goes, uh, no, he said, he said, why aren't you afraid? This is the greatest conqueror in the world. And the guy told Alexander the Great, I'm not afraid because I don't have a need or desire to conquer the world. I'm, 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 I'm wording it wrong, but he basically was like, that need you have to conquer have the world it. is your Achilles. Ooh. That's your problem. Ooh. I don't have that desire. I don't have the need to want to conquer the world and conquer everybody. And it did end up killing him. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred fucking percent. I said, like, hold on. Did you see the Napoleon trailer? Oh my God. That Napoleon? shit is so fun. How short is he? Why well, short? <laughs> I thought that too, but he ain't so. short. That's look, British propaganda, bro. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because they were terrified of that motherfucker. He was running shit. I had a fire Napoleon joke on the Daily Show. I can't remember what it was. What was it? Oh, it was uh oh, it was about height. I mean, it was about how Napoleon was short and he took over an entire continent. Abraham Lincoln was tall and he got shot in the fucking head. So, so who's... What a miss. Who, who, what a miss. Who's more successful? What a who miss. had more success? Yo, what a miss. What a miss. How crazy is that? Yo, Abe Lincoln, bro. Except he was sitting down. Say again? Except Lincoln was sitting down when he was shot. You ever seen me when I'm sitting That's down? That's what gave him better talk. Yeah, sitting I'm way shorter he, sitting down yeah. and standing up. Right? <laughs> That's, That's how Sam works. <laughs> Yo, Abe Lincoln, son. Lincoln, you know Lincoln, Lincoln got the gay rumors, right? People said Abe Lincoln's gay. That's why they call him Stinkin' Lincoln? Stinkin' Lincoln. <laughs> Damn. Stinkin' Lincoln, yeah. Yeah, the log cabin is his asshole. <laughs> Yo, the log cabin. Yo, bring your log in this cabin, bro. Holy yeah. shit. But for real, they said he was gay. Really? And he did get shot watching a play. Gay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, come on, I'm just saying. What he Why did for is it black. okay to make Lincoln jokes nowadays? Nah, because time went by. Yeah, enough time went by. Oh, and there's none of Lincoln's those. the GOAT. Like, he's the motherfucking GOAT. My brother's named after Lincoln. My dad's biggest fan is Abraham Lincoln. Your brother's name is Greg. Gregory Lincoln Schultz. Oh, But gotcha. Lincoln is the gotcha. motherfucking GOAT. That being said, his wife was crazy. Literally had a batshit crazy wife, right, Chris? Correct. So he was probably, you know, getting sucked. But there was rumors. See, this is how you know Abraham Lincoln was great. Whenever you got rumors that you're gay, that you're everything. No, that's how you know he's black. But that's what I'm saying. That's black. how you know he Abraham he Lincoln's black, bro. Like what? What? What was Abraham Lincoln? Yo, you really? know how you know Abraham Lincoln is really black though, for real, for real. What the fuck? That is hilarious. They got Trump on one side and Lincoln on the other. Yo, what about Lincoln? Okay. Think about how they treated Lincoln. What what coin is he on? The penny. The only coin. This brown, right? Yeah. Have you seen the Lincoln Memorial? Put up a picture of the Lincoln Memorial right now. Put up a picture of the Lincoln Memorial the right now. Tell me, to, tell me this ain't a black man. I, Put up I, a picture of the Lincoln Memorial right now from the outside. Though. Why is the penny brown, though? Is there, do we know why the penny's brown? Because Lincoln's black. Cop. 
I'm out of town, thugging with my round. Look at that. Look at that right there. Look at top left. Go, go. You just had it. Why do we never top say left. Penny Brown? Top left. Top left. Top left. Top left. Click that right there. Yeah. Zoom in a little bit. He is the only statue behind bars. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Damn. They done locked up Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you Damn. know he's black. They locked him up. Damn. He's incarcerated. And he on the brown penny. God. He on the brown Damn. penny. Damn. He's incarcerated. And 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 they used him um, for one of he the greatest. He got the freeway beard. He got the freeway Philly beard. beard. They used him as one of the greatest anthems of all time. Go. I got five on it. I song got five about on it. He's Car on the five dollar bill. The car the black people love to drive is the Lincoln. Woo! Stinking Lincoln. Damn. Abraham Lincoln is black. God damn. That's bro. a black ass man. And they shot him. Got shot. God damn, man. Drive by. That's why don't nobody care when we make Lincoln jokes no there more. There it is. If Lincoln was white, they'd probably stop. I gotta stop making fun of the first black president, man. Yo, you know what's crazy? Have you seen <laughs> have you have you seen uh have you seen Martin Luther King statue in Washington, DC? No. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one he, he got a cat. Hold on, you got a statue in D.C.? I in D.C.? In no, of course. You got the one where... Oh, yeah, yeah, on the National Monument, I think, right? But you know what's wild is it's white. I mean, it's, yeah, the, 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 uh, the, the statue, the, but like, the material. Why not make it black? Why not make it out of black material? Well, probably when they made it, they probably didn't have the color palettes to do it right. What do you mean when they made it? They made it like fucking 10 years ago or something oh, like that. I thought that should been up there. Bro, they've had marble, they've had different color marble for fucking centuries. My point is, hundreds from hundreds of years from now, 400 years from now, people are gonna think Martin Luther King was white. Because of the statue? Yeah, that's that's the only thing they'll have to remember him. Nah, look at those you features, man. You could've made it, man. go. Look at those features, man. What features, Wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, look at the yeah, features. What, what features? The black man, man. What features? The nose, Zoom in. The, the lips. lips. That's Kim Jong-un. Guys. <laughs> so that is, if I tell you that's Kim Jong, them lips, bro, I ain't gonna lie. That's a K Jr., man, that's a black so, man. So that is Kim Jong-un until you hit them lips. So. Now they might cut the, they might knock the nose and the lips off. Now the nose, the now nose is the, still knock, ambiguous. They take the nose and the lips off. You might be wondering who that is. That's, That's point. Steve Harvey, bro. <laughs> That's Steve Harvey, bro. <laughs> That's the king, man. Yo, survey says <laughs> some <laughs> some <somebody> got. <laughs> Shut up, man. Let's let's pay some bills, man. DoorDash. Everyone deserves to feel like a VIP, and with Dash Pass from DoorDash, you can. Dash Pass members get zero dollar delivery fees and up to ten percent of eligible DoorDash orders, including groceries, drinks, personal care items, and more. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code Idiots to get fifty percent up. Off up to a ten dollar value when you spend twelve dollars or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. Dash Pass makes delivery even more worth it, helping members save more than thirty five dollars per month on average. Plus, Dash Pass delivers way more than just tonight's dinner, including special access to experiences, promotions, and Dash Pass exclusive menu items, all only for nine ninety nine a month. Sign up for Dash Pass now, and you'll get your first month free. Put a little joy back into your schedule. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code Idiots and get fifty percent off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass with code IDIOTS. Subject to change, terms apply. Sign up for more. Become a Dash Pass member today. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break for a second because listen, we gotta put in our picks, okay? You already know it's prize picks time. It's time to hit them with the more or less. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I got some guaranteed locks. I'm putting the quotes on it, guaranteed, because it's gotta be legal, but I have not missed yet. I don't even know if that's true, but I'm telling you, okay? <laughs> Prize picks. It's a skill-based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they will go more or less than their projections, you can win up to 25 times your money. That's simple as that, more or less. A, this person's gonna get more than five rebounds. A, this person's gonna drop more than 20 points. A, this person's gonna throw less than two touchdowns. It is not difficult and you are going to cash in. Also, they have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players and stat types. Oh, this is what, one of the reasons why Prize Picks are the number one daily fantasy sports app, okay? Just telling you right now, you go find your 
guaranteed locks, and you just cash in. It's simple as that. And you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna match your initial deposit bonus up to $100 when you use our promo code. I'm telling you, Prize Picks offers the weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts as well. They got Taco Tuesday, okay? Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select players' projections up to 25% to provide even more value, okay? Prize Picks also now offers Apple Play for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. With Prize Picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. Think about that. Think about that. For NFL games and college football top 25 matchups, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. They're looking out for you. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. How crazy is that? Especially when you're hitting the more lesses on football, okay? So, Right now, Prize Picks is going to match your initial deposit bonus up to $100. That means you put in $100, they're matching with $100. And you use it. Get your picks in with all that, okay? That's free money. An extra $100 for you to win some stuff on. So you go to prizepicks.com slash idiots. Use the code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100, okay? Prize Picks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Now let's get back to the show. Church announcement show, T. You already know, you Madison already Square know. Garden. Madison Square Garden, thank you guys so much for selling out the first show. We're adding a second one. We're trying to go back to back at the garden, so get those tickets. Um, I'm not sure exactly what day this episode is coming out, but whenever it does come out, go there, get it. These are gonna be the shows. You know, I, I'm gonna make sure that this is the wildest comedy show Madison Square Garden has ever seen. He sold out the first These. show in 90 minutes. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's very hard to do the podcast today only because I only feel like talking about this, because it's such a fucking accomplishment. Yeah, it's, it's you know what I'm saying. Cool. It's fucking cool. So thank you guys, everybody who supported, everybody who spread the word, everybody who continues to spread the word. Keep doing that. Uh, we need that, and I love that, and it means the world. And I promise you, I'm going to deliver the greatest comedy show the Garden's ever seen. May third, May third, May fourth. May fourth already sold out. So when the tickets go on sale for May third, by the time this comes out, it'll probably be sold out. Let's hope, man. I'm, Let's I'm, hope. I'm, I'm, inshallah. 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 Um, I got to tell everybody, I can't believe I forgot the book. I had it with me all day. Salute to my guy, Doug Melville, um, Invisible Generals. Invisible Generals comes out. It came out Tuesday. You know, we're recording this on a Tuesday. Invisible Generals actually came out uh, today. You know what I mean? So that is the next release, the latest release off my book imprint with Simon & Schuster, Black Privilege, Publishing The Amazing True Story of America's First Black Generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen. Invisible Generals is out today. Salute to everybody that's been reviewing it. Um, I had him on The Daily Show with me last week, and after The Daily Show happened, he was like top 10 in like no, top five in 10 different categories on Amazon, man. So, you know, it's one of those stories, like not only did Benjamin O. Davis help integrate uh, the uh, U.S. military and, and, and found the Tuskegee Airmen, he helped with uh, implementing the speed limit, the 55 mile per hour speed limit. Haters, man. And the TSA. <laughs> And what we now know is the TSA. So it's like a really incredible story, man. So make sure you go out there and get Invisible Generals anywhere you buy he books. He created the speed limit? He helped create the speed limit. Unfucking believable He might be single-handedly responsible for you guys being late all the fucking time. Shut the fuck up. Dude, Dude, if there was no speed limit, <laughs> think about how on time black people could be. But this guy really fucked it up 55 for you. 55 miles per hour? 55. Yeah. Um, yeah, and salute to everybody that watched me on The Daily Show last how week, man. How was that, man? How'd it feel? Yeah. Bro, it was the most fulfilling television experience. I've had as a talk show host. Amazing. Wow. It was like playing with the the 90, 90s Bulls. Like whatever, whatever it probably felt like to play in Phil Jackson's triangle offense when yeah. it was, you know, back to back three peating, it felt like that. Can you uh, tell that joke? Can you tell that joke that you had? What was the joke? The Chinese one? Yeah, that's so good. I mean, they played half of it when I did it. it was <laughs> when Gavin Newsom ran over the Chinese kid in China, and I was like, finally, a Democrat that's being tough on China. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, he knocked the little kid down. I was like, oh, COVID, bitch. Yeah. You know, and then I was like, <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, hey, just glad this kid is all right. He's got to get back to 
phenomenal. That's the only thing they cut all week. That's phenomenal. You know what I mean? That's phenomenal. But man, it really was like, because here's the thing about people don't realize about the Daily Show. It looks the, good on you, bro. But it's an institution. Shows. It looks good on you. It felt good, but it's an institution. Yes, yes. This has been around for 27 years. Yes, you are signing up for the role. That's right. Yes, yes, And that's yes. what you have to know when you go into that yes. building. I think that makes sense. Don't go in there trying to change their culture. Right. You just go in there and elevate whatever it is and, yeah. that culture already is. Like, you didn't go play for the Bulls in the 90s and change what fuck Phil Jackson It's going to be doing. the triangle defense. That's how right. How can you offense. excel? With, sorry, yeah. triangle offense. It's, how can you excel within the That's triangle? That's right. I'm yeah. going to take your talents yeah. and I'm going to use your talents to help us Elevate. Elevate what yeah. we're already doing. Yeah. Same thing with the Patriots in the 2000s, the Spurs in the 90s, 2000s, whoever you can name, whatever system it was, that's what this is. And, and it's such a system. The showrunner of the show, her name is Jennifer Flans. Got to give Jennifer salute to her because everything Shout starts at the top. Yes. Right? <gasps> She's been there. She was a PA <laughs> since 96. Yep. So she gets it. She understands the system. Yep. She understands, you know, what it is they're trying to do. The Daily Show, I think the Daily Show has a certain uh, pulse of society. Mm. And it's a certain thing we expect from the Daily yep. Show, right? It's a bar that Jon Stewart set. Oh, amazing. You know, yeah. Trevor took that baton and carried it. And I think people want that sensibility. Yes. You know? Yeah, absolutely. But I thought it was cool that you maybe pushed back against what the typical sensibility of the Daily Show would be. Well, I think the, I think the sensibility of what it became. Because if you go back now, let's go yeah, back. Yeah, let's they, go back to when fair. John Stewart was on. Yeah. John Stewart was talking to both sides I of the like, aisle. I feel like yours was more reflective of that. Yeah, because that, that's that's what we do. Yeah, like we're the type of people we want to sit down and we have want we want to have conversations about with everybody. Yeah. and about everything. And just as far as being objective, that's just who we naturally are. Yeah, people say we're contrarians. I disagree, right? But. The, the reality is we just like to see things from all, all angles, angles and yes. all sides can be explored. I think as soon as you pick a side, you lose. Yeah. I think as soon as you pick a side, you shut yourself down to learning, being educated. Agreed. Like, like you cannot just shut things down. Agreed like, you 100%. Know, like how you said just now, even about Mike Johnson, you'll hear him out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mike Johnson. That speaker of the house. Oh, yeah. yeah he was yeah. super homophobic and hates gay people. No, I'm just going to hear him out. <laughs> Hold on. Because you said his worldview was the Bible. No, I'm what? hearing him out about uh, Rome. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you want to hear he about Rome? He might have some facts. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because he said, he, he said homosexuality is the fall of Rome. I get, I get what you're saying. Let's, why, let's hear it out. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And, and, and by the way, if you don't agree, we should just shoot it down. Gay dudes look like they're having a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. If everybody was gay... There was too much fun in Rome. The empire would fall. Nobody was working. America would fall. <laughs> if everybody was gay, America would fall. No, everybody's having too much fucking fun. Come on. I don't know, though. Gay people are very organized, bro. If everybody's gay, right? We'd be a very well-dressed society. We'd be well-dressed, but yes. nobody's going to be buying shit at Sephora. A lot more empathy we'd have. Empathy. You don't think so? Yeah. I think we'd have a lot more empathy for each other. Listen, there'd be advantages if everybody's gay, and there'd be disadvantages if everybody's it's gay. Like in life, everything. Just like in everything, life. Yeah, everything, yeah. But everything. I just need to see it. Yeah. I need to see it. Yeah. Like I need to understand his argument. Yeah, I'm with you, but that's my point. You're willing to listen. It's and actually, and if you disagree, you're going to challenge him on the disagreement. And the crazier the argument you got, the more I want to listen. Come on, to man. It. Come on, man. The more I want to listen. Come on, man. To it. If you tell me you turned into a wolf when you were younger, I want to hear it out. But it's true. That really You've been to telling me. me that for 10 years. I have no reason to lie about it. Every that. single time you tell me, I listen. I have no reason to lie about that. But long story short, Daily Show was fantastic. I love it. I really, it really was. It was, it was massive. Incredible. Salute to everybody at the Daily Show, the whole production team, all the writers, everybody. Uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. And it's one of those experiences where you walked away and you felt like you actually learned something. Like, I felt like I grew from that experience. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really do. I felt it. I, like, how so? Um, I learned that experience really, truly does matter. Experience in hosting a show? Well, or, that that as well, you know, and, and I have a lot of experience in hosting. That was another thing too, right? It's like, damn, because you know, when you start to do as much television as I've done or talk shows, right? Because I had Charlemagne and Friends that evolved into Uncommon Sense. All of that was with MTV too. Then we did, 
you know, God's Honest Truth, that turned into hell of a week. That was with Comedy Central. And when the shows don't necessarily go the way you want them to go, like they end up getting canceled, you start to question yourself a little bit like, yeah. well, I did it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I got the opportunity to do yeah. it. You know, maybe it's not my thing, but then you constantly keep getting pulled back to do it. And then when you get to do something like The Daily Show and you're in there with a bunch of well-seasoned, experienced writers who know how to do what it is you're attempting to do and they get it when you go in there and you say, oh, this is the idea that I have, yada, 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 and they know how to execute it, you know, it just makes you feel like, oh, this is what I was This is missing. what I need when I'm there. what I yep. need. And it's not, it's not a knock to any of the... The, the the writing rooms that we've had. But it is. It's, it, well, no, I, I'll tell you what, it, the, the, you can have the talent. There's levels. But you gotta have the experience. Yeah, there's levels. You can be a, you can be a raw talent that can write some fire shit, but do nah, you nah. know, do you have the experience? There's levels to this it's shit. levels. You and it's okay, mean? they should aspire also to do it. That's why you gotta have rooms where you gotta have your 20 year veteran, and if you want to bring in this newbie who got the talent, yeah. you got this 20-year veteran to put his arm around this newbie 100%. and show this newbie how to write TV. It's the Miami Heat. It's a different ballgame. Writing TV is a different ballgame than just writing jokes. 100%. And you, know you might saying? need somebody who just got crazy ideas or funny ideas around people who can really polish things, and then you build this great joke. Yeah. But just having people who have the crazy ideas and nobody who can structure it, or just having the structure and none of the crazy ideas yeah. isn't gonna work. And and you gotta have people who just wanna try shit. Yeah. If you One, one of the biggest issues that everybody has nowadays when they go in writers' rooms is you will spend so much time Debating what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. <laughs> Deb well, debating what's offensive and what's not offensive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't even have a... I can't... Like, if I want to do a long story short, which I did on Daily Show, about, you know, Joe Biden and why Democrats are weak, like, let's just do the take. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like... Because we all... It's not like we don't know this. Yeah. Like, if we're being honest, if everybody's being honest, you know... Yeah. That they're weak. Yeah. You know America loves this gangster shit. Yeah. You know why people like Trump. Let's try to not to act like we don't. Exactly. Stop and we pretending. know why people don't like Biden. So let's let's stop acting like we're we don't. emotional creatures. We're emotional creatures. So let's 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 give some critique on what the Democrats could be doing. How about y'all need to get on this gangster shit too? That was my that was basically my take. Yeah. So when you got a room full of people that's like, I totally get it. Let's get to it. I love it. As opposed to I don't know. I, yeah. mean, I don't want to sound like you're supporting Trump. This and that. Oh, uh, God, we're yeah. smart people here, y'all. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And you're also brave enough to take the risk. I think that's the thing. It's like a lot of people are concerned about the perspective that they'll have or people have about them. Mm -hmm. But I think oftentimes those people are out of touch with what the streets are talking about. And by the streets, I just mean like what the average American is, mm -hmm. is feeling. If you live in like a Hollywood bubble or a political bubble or like, I don't know, like a, maybe an entertainment bubble or whatever it is, you're really just concerned with that bubble. And those people in the bubble are not reflective of Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you know what Americans really feel, you have a little bit more freedom to play because you're not worried you're going to be labeled as some MAGA dude just because you're saying, yo, Biden don't got the gangster shit right. that Trump does. And that's what the people want. That's right. That's yeah. right. When a coach is talking to you, a coach is telling you everything that you're not doing correct because mm. he wants you to correct it because he wants you to fucking be the best version of yourself so you can fucking win. Win, yeah. And that's what we got to do. But it, it's just interesting. It just make and, and it did make me feel like, man, I um, when we when we have these writers' rooms where we're bringing in like all new people and they don't have the experience, it's like, yeah, I'm, 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 it made me feel like I set them up for failure. Yeah, you because need like you gotta have yeah. the experienced people in the room, man. I know. You got to. Salute to my guy, uh, you know, uh Josh Lee. He came on for the second season of Hell of a Week. He came from Daily Show. Interesting. And he bought that experience. Yeah. So those talented people we had in the room, like the Charles McBees and the Dre's and, you know, Lene and everybody else, like we, you know, we he was able to help get the best out of them. Yeah. And, and and basically just show them how to actually write for a talk show, yeah. you know, and so salute to Lene. Lene works at The Daily Show now. Like, you know what I mean? She's in the writer's room over there. So, yeah, yeah you just got, the long story short, for anything that you're doing, do not discount experience. Uh, like, you know, we love to run towards youth yeah. and we love to run towards yeah. what's new. It, people, and surround yourself with greatness, that's bro. That's right. It's like greatness is only going to make you more great. That's right. It's the reason people 
are happy to be 20 year veterans or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what 100%. I'm saying? 100%. 25 year veterans at something. Like, like you got to have that experience in the room. Bro, the, the, the video that we put out, you know, with my dad and I at Madison Square Garden, like, that, Vala made that video. And it was just absolutely beautiful. He's amazing at creating those videos, right? Amazing. I feel like you setting something up. I feel like you setting something up. No, Vala. It sounds like That's it's a not. a real person. That's a real, I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> swear to God it is. Where is he? <laughs> He's the, <laughs> the ball one. He's in your mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. But Vala, Vala, okay. Vala made the video, and he's just amazing at creating these pieces. And when you have someone that's that great at it, you get something that that that's great. Obviously, I have a relationship with my father that is incredibly important to me, and it's something that I can speak on very easily because of how important it is. But you still need someone great to elevate, and that's just like the Daily Show that's or anything right. else. It's like. Your talent, if you have the right people around you, there's nobody who can stop it. There's, because already you're going to be able to do it by yourself better than most people. Or and enough. then you get people around you that are nice. Man, yo. What happened when Jordan got Pippen, Tony Kukoc, Dennis man. Rodman? Like, things man. started to be different. Man, and it's, it's, it's a tone-setting thing, man. I'm telling you, man. I, it's, the Daily Show has a culture. Mm. When you do it, you understand what I'm saying. Like, when you go there... You'll get it, and and you'll you'll quickly gain trust for the room. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You'll quickly gain trust for the room. And Vala could have fucked that video up. Yep. That's a one take shot, bro. You only get one time to do that Bruh. shit. Now you're not gonna go in there and tell your pops that twice. Unfortunately, I probably could have. Oh shit! Based on my dad's memory, <laughs> but it, it, unfortunately, God. unfortunately, God. Yeah, you think I would that trade. So your dad be like, "Why the fuck are you telling me this again?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. <laughs> I got it. We're here. I got it. No, uh, but you're right. 100. percent It's just like could have fucked that up, and to capture the raw up. emotion of that shit. Oof. You know what I'm saying? Oof. To capture the 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 the, the look of. Of joy in your father's eyes, the uh, what's yeah. the word I'm looking for? The pride, pride yeah. that he had for yeah. you in that moment. Yeah, you know the the, the capture of you, the innocence. Yeah, the, 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 I love the the interstitials of you as a child because yeah. in that moment, as you're talking to your dad, you saw your inner child. Yeah. You saw your inner child, like, yeah. thanking your dad yeah. for all of that stuff that most kids take for granted, man. Yeah. Until they get old enough to realize, God damn, Pops was right. Yeah. This shit is not easy. This shit uh -huh. is no joke. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Amen. So, man, salute the volume. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, don't, now you trying to get me. <laughs> no. Now you trying to volume. get me. Volume. <laughs> um, Yvonne Orgy is opening up about her virginity at the age of 39. And she revealed that she has pent-up sexual energy. Let's hear it. She did. She's on Chelsea Handler's podcast. Oh my God, I love this. This is the most original guest we've ever mm -hmm. had on. Mm -hmm. And you, what are you, 39? I am. Oh my God. That dam is going to break one day, baby. And baby, I, let me tell you right now. I, like, people were like, oh, you know, Yvonne, you ever, I was like, pray for him. Whoever he is, <laughs> God is going to break him. A lot of pent up energy up in here. <laughs> oh my god, and you're gonna hit your sexual peak when you start having sex. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're gonna need a couple of men, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you all look familiar, Virgin, to Polly Ellery. Are you still a virgin? I wonder how you know you got pent up sexual energy if you never had sex. Yeah. Actually, so. Let me just probably. What? Masturbating all the time. She's an actress. She's an actress, and she does like sex scenes like in. in so what? She's still, it's still not sex. I know, but she has to act in Like, you know how you started blushing when you started talking about how you <laughs> smashed the dude from Hampton a couple weeks ago <laughs> that you at homecoming? I can't you, believe you had that. Your old new boo. <laughs> Remember how you started blushing and you was tossing your hair and shit and creasing your jaw and shit? Like, you know what sex feels like. So, you know, having pent up sexual energy, if you've never had sex, how can you, you have You don't think that? she masturbates Did or you have an orgasm? Like that? <sighs> that still ain't sex, though. <laughs> Did you? You didn't have one? I had. I'm not telling you my business. This no is great. I don't even like talking about this because I know Yvonne. Like, but it's just you know what I mean. But it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you have pent up sexual energy if you've never had Why? sex. But wait a minute, did you did you have? Uh... Oh, we're not getting on. We're talking about Yvonne. You know you can't edit. He's got the no edit feature on. <laughs> <laughs> did he hit it from the bottom? He did... can't edit any of this, Taylor. Did he give you the popcorn? None of this is getting edited, Taylor. He can't do it. Is did he popcorn? give you popcorn? 
What is that? <laughs> the popcorn from the bottle. <laughs> Did he give you a popcorn? What makes a man the throat go? To what? What? <laughs> what kind of Pete what? Buttigieg question is that? Yo, come on, Yo, bro. I told Pete, he was on purpose. Yeah. No, you didn't catch him. I told yeah, him, you didn't no, catch what I told him was, he was talking about Mike Johnson, right? Hey, yo. And I was like, yo, it's kind of crazy for him to hate gays and his last name is Johnson, right? Yeah. And Pete is like, okay, I think I got to go cut a ribbon or something real quick. And I said, yo, you got to hit Mike and with the tip of the files, yo. <laughs> And what he said? He, he was like, I gotta go. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. He's like, I gotta go do something. <laughs> like, he he knew. didn't ask who or what? No, he knew what the tip of the file So he was. listens? I don't know if he listens. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's crazy that you dislike gay people so much and your last name is Johnson. Bernard. Shut up, man. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, you don't Secretary think Pete. Anyway. Use that one, Pete. Secretary Pete, use that one. Yeah, file that away. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Did you make any sounds? Can you relax? <laughs> What, what did it sound hell? like? Did it you sound had sex she before, right? She probably sounded like Doja Cat. He's like, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> no, <laughs> but for real. This, no. What does it sound like? Why do you want to know? I want to know if it sounds oh. like lobster mac and cheese. You gonna marry that man, yo? Yeah, I hope lobster so. Mac. It does it sound I'm like telling you. Lobster. <laughs> does it sound so. like the lobster mac? Taylor. Hayes is going to marry that man. Well, yeah, if he's turning Remember into I Lobster said it. Mac. I can see it on you. <laughs> Y'all both went to Hampton together, Hampton alumni. Yep. You're in love. Facts. You're also, in love. Uh huh. You're going to marry that man. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. You two weeks pregnant now. I don't even no, know. No, I'm not. Two weeks. <laughs> no, Did he I'm use not. a condom? No, I'm not saying anything else. You two weeks Whoa, pregnant. Whoa, that sounds right like he now. hit it raw. You he... two weeks pregnant right now and don't even know it. I'm really not. Don't don't. Can we it. just be honest? <laughs> keep it, Taylor. Did he did he hit it raw? I want to keep it. If it keep says. it, Taylor. Did he hit it raw? I don't need to know all of this. My man took you to the sushi. Bar. You're gonna get married. <laughs> You're oh gonna get married. God. You let the man eat Pound at the town. motherfucking omakase. I cannot. Pound town, <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> what you else let we got, him hit Taylor? It raw? All right, so look. Shout out to all the virgins out, to... out there. Y'all going to heaven, man. <laughs> Real talk. Word up. God damn. Marriage? Huh? Is she waiting for marriage? Yes. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. Anybody out there that's a virgin right now and you want to wait for marriage, you're doing what you're just, supposed to be doing. I feel like it's hard in this day and age, though. What what is mean? With her age, yeah. Guys aren't going to be, like, unless she meets her man in church. Yeah, they, they church, they definitely fucking. You got, so many, you got so many men in church that are virgins with their penis, but fucking whores with their asshole. <laughs> Yo, you, wait what's a minute. going on, Taylor? No, that's facts. That's Girls the truth. in church get butt fucked because they're trying to find a way. I around. said the guys. What? Yeah, that's the, <laughs> I said the guys. Wait, what are you going? What's going on? I what? said the guys are virgin with their penises, but fucking whores with their buttholes. I mean, in church. Yeah, but that's not consensual, bro. That's yes, it is consensual. You think they're giving it up to them priests consensually? I ain't the priest. What are we talking <laughs> about? Anything about the priest? But don't the priest do that? Oh my god! What you? Oh my god! And lobster mac over there? <laughs> Yo, it's pound town. Yo, pound town. How, how how he turn your shit to lobster oh mac? God. You gonna get, to you gonna get married though? That's the beauty of it. You never. I'm telling you. You, you never mix up some lobster mac and it sound like it. <laughs> what the fuck does lobster mac sound like? I know. No, like lobster play. mac. You never mix up a oh. bowl of lobster mac and it sounds like Why you're hitting it? Why would I be lobster mac, yeah. though? Why not you just mac and cheese? Pieces of red fish in there. Why? <laughs> no. No. First of all, lobster's a crustacean. <laughs> Se second of all, nah, you Shout out to red. Missy oh, Elliott. I, I, I She's the first. Line. I didn't, hold on real quick. Rich what King is she? doesn't know Martin Luther King's real name. What is that about? Well, oh, you didn't wait, see he got a different name? Look. I didn't hear this. Kid doesn't know Martin Luther King's real name, but he—that's his name. Exactly, but he didn't. He gets full. Shout out to Rich see Kid. It. I want to shout out to Rich. Rich Kid got bangers, bro. Nah, Rich the Kid fires. Rich, Rich Kid got kid. bangers, bro. What's going on so. with this? All right, never mind. Anyway, Are let's you? do some uh, asking yeah, idiots. Let's do asking idiots. Let's do asking idiots. Sorry, everybody. We're Taylor, just, you got some asking idiots for us? We're just yes, but wait, this is actually really funny. Oh man, you know what's really funny? Okay, let's yeah. hear it. Okay, he's with Funny Marco. Could you tell us Dr. Martin Luther King real name? Huh? His real name? Uh, 
the second. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere yeah, ignorance and conscious exactly. stupidity. No, see, here's the thing. Rich the Kid probably never has watched Marco's show. So he don't understand that Marco was being sarcastic with that question. He's watched the show. Well, even if he's watched the show, maybe he felt like he was getting caught in the trick bag because there's no reason for him to ask that. But you know what? That wasn't a bad answer. The second? <laughs> because he, his Do son, we know his, that he's not the his, second? Yeah, his son is the third. Do we know he's not the second? He is. He is oh, he second. is Martin Luther King Jr. That he got it yes, right. He got it right. I'm like, hey, he got it right. What the fuck? Nah, bro. Rich oh, the kid the is that dude. Yeah, yeah. The yeah Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Son. Martin Luther King the third. He's he was oh, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He was you're motherfucking right. You're right. right. You're right. Fuck, Fuck y'all, Rich the kid for Rich the kid was absolutely correct. Hundred percent. Martin Luther King Jr. Duh. You don't know shit. Taylor, you wouldn't know that. Oh, maybe that's what he wanted though. Oh, maybe that's why they clowned him because they wanted him to say Junior. But the nah, second the is second still junior. Is yeah, the second is still junior. Yeah. You don't say, yeah, I'm with that. Let's do right. some asking idiots, well, Taylor. Also, shout out to Missy Elliott and Shaka Khan and DJ Kohurk for being Hall of Famers. They've been Hall of Famers before the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Didn't need the Hall of Fame to validate their names. Lauren Hill speaks on lateness. I do want to talk about this that we can do asking idiots. Right. Because this is interesting. Because I want to know how you feel about this as an entertainer. What'd she say? Say, yeah, she's late. She's late tonight. Yo, y'all lucky I'm making this blood rise stage every night. Okay. 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 I don't do it. I don't do it because they let me do it. I do it because I stand here in the name of God. And I do it. Okay. Sister Act 2. Fire. Who surrounded me with family and community. When there was no support, when the album sold so many records, and no one showed up and said, hey, would you like to make another one? So I went around the world, and I played the same album over and over and over. I heard songs that was supposed to be on Lauryn Hill's second album. When I used to go to Miami and work at Circle House Studios with the Diaz brothers, the Diaz brothers let me hear a song that uh, they had did. I don't know if they did it with Lauryn or they mixed it for Lauryn or something. But here's the thing. That is a terrible excuse for being late, yo. You can't be late constantly and then show up and tell the crowd, y'all lucky I even made it here. Speed limit, stage. bro. <laughs> it's your boy. It's your boy, bro. Like, like that is not, like that. And, and, and why were they cheering? Like, the people that were cheering for that shit are masochists. Y'all like pain. Like, why would you be cheering? She for had that, that rhythm. Mm -hmm. She like, had that yeah. preacher rhythm. And once you speak in that rhythm, I'm clapping, bro. Anything. You could say, <laughs> she could have said anything right Anything. There. Everybody here should die. And, and, and what else is bad about this? Like, look, she says, yo, y'all lucky I made it on this stage here tonight. I'll make it on this stage every night. The reality is, Queen Lauren Hill, you're lucky that people still show up to the shows mm. <laughs> knowing that you're going to be late all the time. Facts. Like, yo, don't take that for granted, man. Like, you know, uh -huh. one album, 20 plus years later, people still showing up the way that you they gotta do. You got to be grateful, man. Don't take that for granted, Not man. Not take that for granted. Don't take that for granted. A lot of dried up lobster max That's waiting right. for you to hit the stage. And don't blame it on God, because God may not come when you call. But he's always on time. He's on time, God. Let's do some Asking Idiots, Taylor Gang. Um, can I tell them to yes. uh, be quiet? But also just start with the asking idiots. <clears throat> Taylor, why do you hate asking idiots, man? Why you don't want to do that? It's right crazy. Here. It's kind of crazy how much you hate asking. It's idiots. really crazy. Yeah. Like they got noisy out there. Who I the know, fuck I is this? Jelly told Roll? Tanya. Tanya? Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Underscore only one rye underscore says, how do you know if your career is the right one for you? Hezzy. Um, it doesn't feel like work. You love what you're doing. You can't wait to do it more. When you're not working, you're thinking about it. You want to talk about it. You want to problem solve within it. And the thing that you're doing just brings you so much joy. And outside of bringing you joy, it can, it can exhaust you and it can be tiring, but at the same time, it's satisfying. You're not going through it 
lamenting it. You're not going, I wish I wasn't doing this thing and I'm wasting my life. And, you know, I think I've been very fortunate. I'm sure you feel this way. You've been very fortunate to not feel that way about the things we do to make a living. I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, if your career is the right one for you, if you know, uh, you don't feel like it's work, you know, they always say, if you love, if you're doing something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt like I worked uh, a, a, a day in my life. Take, to go back to the Daily Show, that's how the Daily Show felt last week. Interesting. It did not feel it like work. work was it, it was tedious. But it didn't feel like you were work. But it didn't feel like work. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, and that's how I feel on the radio every morning. I actually be feeling guilty. Like, God damn, I get paid X, Y, and Z to do this. So, and this question is crazy. What, uh, yes. That's 2K West. Yes. <laughs> yes. He said... Uh, you guys were not married to your wives. Would y'all ever be in a serious relationship with a stud? <laughs> nah. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, why yeah. would a stud want to be in a relationship with one of us? And just imagine them borrowing your jeans and shit, <laughs> getting lobster mac all over them. You know what stud is an acronym for? Some titties under that shirt. <laughs> It's, it was so close. It's some titties under <laughs> yeah, that dress. Under, the dress. under that dress? Stud, the stud. D. Stud. Oh, I said studs. Oh. Under. But I added an S, some titties under nah, that you shirt. you were close, bro. Run it back because I feel like you right you on just, the press. No, I did studs. Some titties under that shirt. Some titties under dress. Some titties some under dress. titties under that shirt. Bone studs in harmony. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> Stud life tatted across my stomach. Stud right life. Strapped. <laughs> oh, wait, there we go. We got this. Hold on. Stud is strapped, tucked. <laughs> so, like something. Strapped, tucked, undercover. Um, I'm about to say dick, but that wouldn't make no sense, would it? I don't know, man. I just don't understand why this is a question. I feel like he just did this so we would get these stud jokes off. Yeah. I don't understand why a stud But shout, would... shout out to you, to you for doing that. Yeah, why he's would a stud... probably into a stud and he's like, yo, is that a, a stud? Maybe that's okay. a stud. Click on it. Yeah, nah, she gonna push a, back, though. He's a dude. That's a dude? Um, that's what studs do, though. They got you tricked. Yeah. Uh, Dog.50 says, when did Charlotte know that it was time to hang up the jersey and be faithful? Mm. Um, You just... Here's the thing. If you're a very self-aware person and you actually love and care about, you know, the person that, you know, you are with, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, whatever it is, you just don't want to hurt that person. Yep. And especially if you've, uh, you know, seen several situations where you saw men be unfaithful and lose their families. I saw that with my father. I saw that with my uncles and, you know, a few of my uncles. And I just did not... Want that to be me. Yeah. Simple as that. And you know, the way my anxiety be set up, bro, I, I can't lie. <sighs> yeah, it just you know the stress that it's gonna bring. Oh uh, no, man. The stress of the lying, the stress of the sneaking around. Who got time? It's for also that? great to like have something that you share with that person that's only yours. Yes, that man. That relationship that you guys have is strictly yours, and you build everything on that. That's right. And then doing anything to undermine that creates a fracture in the entire castle that you're trying to build how can you how can you say that how can you say that that person is your best friend the closest person to you the person you lay down with every night and you're lying to that person yeah like that means your whole foundation everything you just described is a fucking illusion yeah it's not real yeah that shit don't work for me you know what i mean like i i only like to lie on this podcast you know what i mean shout out to that word up i like to lie. To i only that. like to, i come here and i lie just to entertain y'all. Yeah, it's just fucking... You were right about that. All right. Tarjay. Uh, would you rather be able to walk through walls or breathe underwater? I already breathe underwater, so... <laughs> Breathing underwater is way more fire than walking through walls. <laughs> How would you know? Because, I mean, to walk through a wall, like, I have to do is open the door. Like, what would be the... Like, what, what's, the, what's so good about walking through a wall? I mean, if you locked up... And, and, you know... <laughs> rob a bank. Rob a bank. You think they would ever keep you in jail if you had that ability? If you had the ability to just walk through walls, would they ever even think about locking you up? Like, what would be your punishment? How would they even have time? you? How would they even... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I just walk out every single time. At some point, they get tired of catching me. <laughs> they got to put you in jail under the water. Um, On, like, some Magneto shit? What if I could do both? He ain't saying both. I can breathe underwater. All right. All right. 
I ain't, I'm not here to convince y'all. I'll show you. I know. He's an honest podcast, so I know. <laughs> I got gills, bro. <laughs> you should believe me when I'm lying, bro. Um, let's do one or two more. Oh, this is a good one. Let's begin with this. Mussy Legacy. When you are living your dream, what is there to look forward to? Congrats on MSG. Wow. Ooh. Um, new dreams, man. New dreams. New dreams. But this was the last thing that I wanted to accomplish in stand-up comedy. Oh, wow. So I have to start thinking of some new things. And I have other things that are starting to percolate and things I want to work towards, but this was the final destination. So, I mean, it's still a lot of work even to get there, but it is a pretty profound moment in your life when you go, whoa, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I agree with that answer, and I think uh, I, I would simply say when you are living your dream, what is there to look forward to? Living the dream. Living in it. That's why, you, it. that's why when you see certain people and you be like, how you doing? They be like, living the dream. Living the dream. That's really what it is. Hell that's yeah. why that statement exists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Living the dream. Living in the dream. Chris said something earlier that it, it, it just resonated with me, but I understood what he was saying. It's just like, yo, garden. Sold out. Yeah. Living that for yeah. a second. Yeah. Enjoy that moment, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Living that. Before you, we so quick to just want to jump to the next thing and mm. the next accomplishment. Living the dream for a moment, man. No, you're right. Go have a nice meal tonight. Drink some good wine. <laughs> you fucking hate it, Siri. Siri just bringing us back down to reality. Them iPhone jokes. <laughs> Them iPhone factory jokes. They come for you. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.